Would you get excited about a C3AE-6007-HE-361-T? Nineteen sixty five was a big year for Ford as they rolled out a brand new platform for the full size Galaxy models. And true to mid nineteen sixties form, the new cars featured sharper angles and a tighter overall design in favor of the spacey rounded forms of the previous several years. The new car was advertised as being as quiet as a Rolls Royce going down the road. They also debuted a brand new engine, the mighty two hundred and forty cubic inch. 150 horsepower big six touted as the biggest and smoothest inline six cylinder you could get at the time. It featured seven main bearings and hydraulic lifters for smoothness. But we really don't care about any of that. We're looking at a 1965 Galaxy 500 with the super bad R code 427. As fancy and quiet as Ford wanted their cars to be, they also knew full well the power of racing. So along with the sleepy new six and cushy sedans came some of the hottest muscle cars ever built. The new chassis was a big help in the traction department as it now featured unequal length triangulated rear control arms and coil springs in favor of the wheel hop inducing leaf springs. The new frame was also a ladder type perimeter design for better stiffness. The front suspension was redesigned for better handling and a basic design that is still used in NASCAR today. The wheels grew to 15 inches and brakes were also improved. All this adds up to a platform that lended itself nicely to speedway racing as well as the red hot sport of super stock drag racing and Ford had a power plant to contend with for both. The Ford Facts and Figures on High Performance Engines pamphlet written by Ack Miller uh, states that the C3AE 6007-HE-361-T part number refers to a 427 cubic inch high performance engine assembly with two four barrel carburetors. It's what we have here and it's definitely something to get wound up about. Scanning the VIN reveals the letter R in the fifth position indicating the optional 425 horsepower Thunderbird high performance 427 was the engine of choice for this car. The R code engine was basically the complete opposite of every selling point on the regular Galaxy. It was loud, it shook, it was anything but fuel efficient and with no power accessories it was as far from a Rolls Royce as you could get. Starting with the specially prepped 427 block, the 11 to 1 compression R-code engine was fed by two Holley 4160 600 CFM four barrel carburetors perched on top of an aluminum mid-rise intake manifold. The lumpy cam worked a set of oversized two 185 and two 195 inch valves with solid lifters and the exhaust was dumped through cast iron header style manifolds. The result was a stout 425 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 480 pound-feet of torque at 3,700. A tight clutch spun the top loader four-speed manual transmission and the 9-inch rear end was loaded with 411 gears and 31 splined axles to put the power to the wheels. The non-glamorous body color 15-inch steel wheels are bolted to upgraded police and taxi brakes for less fade when you need to haul this nearly 4,000 pound beast back to the ground. However, the subtle vintage burgundy paint looks pretty sweet offset by the redline tires. Inside you'll find a big comfortable bench seat and a willing four-speed shift handle, a minimally stocked dash, and very little else to distract you from burning the tires to the ground. These cars were capable of low 14 second quarter mile times and stock trim, but all the usual hot rotting tricks apply with less restrictive exhaust, stickier tires, a hotter ignition curve, and a good track, the 12s really weren't that far away. People like to talk about sleepers, which are cars that are really a lot faster than they appear. And this 65 R-Code Galaxy is a great example until you open the hood or turn the key. 
On the outside, the big, boxy fastback is devoid of fancy trim and details, save for the very cool Pyrex headlight covers. These were indicators of the R-code engine under the hood and were not found on the lesser galaxies of the day. Today, they're one of the trickiest things to find when restoring these cars. The new for 65 Galaxy was a big hit as Ford sold over 540,000 of them that year. However, only 327 people popped for the Thunderbird High Performance version, making this a rare rare ride indeed. I really dig big cars like this, especially when they're equipped with race-ready drive lines and not much else. What do you think? Are big cars the deal, or do you like them a little smaller and lighter? Let us know on our Facebook page, and make sure you hang around there, because we have a lot more cool cars like this to share with you from the Brothers Collection.